This is an empty recovery tank that weighs 27.3 pounds. The tank can only be filled to 80% of the water column weight, which is 47.7 pounds. I like to use the HVAC School app to determine this as it works with many types of refrigerants. Don't forget to get your tank retested every five years. Since this tank came with nitrogen in it, I'm emptying out the nitrogen. Then I'm gonna hook up a micron gauge and evacuate this tank. With a tank this big, it will take a little bit to achieve below 500 microns, so keep that in mind. The condenser I'm recovering the refrigerant from has a compressor that will not start. It's not shorted to ground, but I do wanna make sure that there's no acid in the system from the compressor failure. I wanna make sure that I don't mix dirty refrigerant with a clean refrigerant in a recovery tank, so this is why I do the acid test. This refrigerant, I can label clean. I didn't have all my tools on me today, but I do have my valve core removal tools. I will be removing the valve cores from the suction line and the liquid line to speed up the recovery process. While I am using quarter inch hoses for my manifold gauges, it's not optimal, but it will work and it will recover all of the refrigerant. And it's probably what most apartment maintenance technicians are using or just have access to. I've got my manifold gauges open, hooking up my charging hose to the pre-filter and bleeding out the air. Valves on the recovery machine are closed. The recovery tank is now evacuated below 500 microns. I'm going to shut down on the suction valve on the recovery machine and do a decay test to make sure that I do not get a significant rise. I will do the decay test for about 10 minutes. If I don't rise above 500 microns over that 10 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down on the liquid line valve on the recovery machine. This tank is now prepped and ready to recover refrigerant. Next, I'm gonna hook up my hose from the discharge of the recovery machine to the liquid line of the recovery tank, but not all the way. Then I'm gonna open my valves to bleed out the air in that refrigerant hose and recovery machine. Next, I'm gonna slap that recovery tank onto my refrigerant scale. Then I'm going to zero out my refrigerant scale. Now everything is set up just like the drawing in the RG3 recovery machine manual. Next, I'm gonna open up my tank valve and then turn on the recovery machine and start pulling in the refrigerant to the recovery tank. Then I'm gonna monitor my refrigerant scale to see the speed and the amount of refrigerant that I'm putting into that recovery tank. When my suction pressure drops and starts getting pretty low, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down on my liquid line valve. Then I'm gonna shut down the recovery machine. I'm gonna close these valves. Then I'm just gonna move the hose over to the vapor side of the recovery tank. But I'm not gonna put it on all the way. I need to bleed this air out of this hose. And I'm going to set my knob to vapor and turn back on the recovery machine to recover the rest of the vapor in the system. I'm now at a little over four pounds of recovered refrigerant and my suction pressure is at zero. So I'm going to shut down on my recovery tank. Then I'm going to shut down on my recovery tank valve and turn the machine off. I've got all of the refrigerant out of this system now. I'm gonna cap that line dryer, and I'm also going to label this recovery tank so it doesn't get mixed up with other refrigerants or dirty refrigerants. Thanks for watching.